Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Eye podcast. You're very welcome to our review show as we're looking back at the epic quarterfinal from Sunday when Armagh took on Galway. As always, this podcast is brought to you in association with McKeever Teamwear, proud supplier of all Armagh GA merchandise. I'm delighted to be joined by Aaron Kiernan and we're looking back at a sensational game, an epic encounter that probably is going to go down as game of the season, but it's a more than that, Arnica, but I think it was the best game I was ever at anyway. Um, like it was, it just had everything, literally everything you would want in a championship game. It had it, it was, it was mental. It was, and I think it was the best way we can all sum it up is everyone who we spoke to now, as soon as the game was over, so spectators, we were exhausted. Uh, I know I stayed on to watch maybe 10 or 15 minutes of the Kerry and Mayo game and my A's were looking at the pitch, but I wasn't processing what was happening. Um, I didn't know who was scoring, so I just took the decision this time to go home here. And it, yeah, it was the excitement levels. It was, it probably reminded me very similar to what the Arma and Dublin game in 02 was. It was just, it was madness. Do you know, the support for from a spectator point of view, it was madness. It was gripping. Um, you just felt like you, you were part of it. Uh, for the boys to stick in it whenever you're six points down with time practically up and we can say, yeah, we were sort of fortunate enough in, in how we got our goals but put the ball in the danger area and anything is possible. Uh, and it, it was, it was just an absolute grandstand finish that was peaked with, with Ray and score um, to have the nerve, obviously, I see him doing that there all the time uh, in training and, and games. Um, he he was always going to back himself. He was never going to shirk the responsibility. I don't know whether he was told it was the last kick of the game. Uh, I, I thought maybe we could have maybe worked it if it had went a bit quicker. And I know Aidan did try to, to play the quick one and the referee brought it back. But if he brought it back and he told him that it was the last kick of the game and he had to go for it, it put even more pressure on him. Um, but... It didn't phase him whatsoever. Uh, I don't know how many camera angles I've seen it now at this stage, and it still just puts the hair stand on the back of your neck. It's I said last week, like that's the type of thing he's dreamt of his whole life, being put in those situations, those scenarios in front of that crowd and delivering. Um, and it was it was a massive score, it was a massive uh, sign of leadership from him. And it uh, yeah, it just it, it finished a uh, normal time uh, on a massive hay for ourselves, um, and then obviously there was there was more to come. Uh, what you said with regards to everything else that you could possibly have in a game, and just on that score, Arn, like the Arma had the campaign of turning Croker orange. The noise once that ball went over the bar was like nothing I had ever heard before. It was unbelievable. Like the crowd was was class. That last ten minutes was just it was all over the place, and the crowd really got behind it. And the most I think there was 30, 35,000 Armagh fans. Then you had the Mayo fans on top of that cheering for Armagh. So the noise levels were just unbelievable for that last ten minutes. It was, and uh, like a week on to the motorway uh, yesterday morning, out at the dock, and next thing bumper to bumper the whole way up the road. Uh, how there wasn't. Mass car crashes, I'll never know. Uh, there's a lot to, lot to be left to be said about Northern drivers heading down the road yesterday. It was cat. But to be fair, like if you give Arma support, and it's cliche, everyone thinks once you're going well, uh, we have the best support in the country. But if if Arma supporters have something to follow, there, there's nobody like them. Um, the numbers that, that they travel in and the noise that they made, it was incredible. And I, I would imagine from a player's perspective, the hay that they would have got from from the likes of that there yesterday, like it's very very hard to replicate it. Um, I would I would probably put it back to my own experience. Probably the 05 semi final against Tyrone was probably something similar. Uh, and unfortunately, then you go through the rest of your career and you don't get the same sort of hay ever again. It just it was unique to see Arma have more support there yesterday than literally three other counties put together speaks volumes um, about how much everyone invested themselves into it. Um, and I have no doubt that uh, as players, you know, particularly once that first goal went in and the noise level started to go up, like just the adrenaline rush that you can get from that there, it can, it can just, the likes of tiredness or cramping or, you know, worrying about anything else that's not really relevant, it goes out of your head. Um, and it was, it was, 
it's up there with as enjoyable as you're ever going to get as a spectator to be so invested uh, in something. And like even the, the, the neutrals around us, Kerry ones, Mayo ones, and they were, they were just in awe of the way things were going, the pandemonium that there was. And then, like I say, for it all to come down to one kick uh, with a country looking at one man to see if he could deliver and then to do it. Um, as as I'm a supporters, like it just we couldn't have been prouder, you know, to see them just going and going and going, and not taking no for an answer was incredible. And I think it's it is the pride you're so proud of, them, like because after the Bolly Buffet game, you were beat and you didn't play well and you didn't perform and everything was just on a downer. Yesterday, while obviously hugely disappointing to lose the game and to lose it in penalties, and we'll we'll get on to that in a bit, but you're coming away and you're so proud of the players and what they brought. And as you say, that fight they showed in the last 10 minutes to come back from like six points down with whatever there was, seven or eight minutes left. There's no chance really. A couple of high balls into the square and, and two goals in the back in the game. And then Rain hits the last point. Like you're coming away. You're so proud of, of what they achieved yesterday. Absolutely. And like, we're not sitting here trying to be portrayed as gallant losers and saying we're happy with what happened yesterday. Like, you know, I'd say whenever the boys look back at it, particularly in the first half, there were opportunities where we could have went for the throat and, and had a few goals that, that we didn't get. Um, but it, it, it is absolutely how they had just kept going. The, the energy levels that they expended, putting their bodies on the lane, chasing lost causes. Like if they remember at this stage, we're down to 14 men as well. Mm. You know, and it's easy to feel sorry. So it's easy to think, God, this is, it's over and done with and we just take our beating. Um, and that, that wasn't the case at all. And I can take yesterday because of how, how well the boys performed. Well, not even performed. In fairness, that might be glossing over. We didn't hit the same football, I suppose. <laughs> our football ability wasn't portrayed as, as good as what we can. But that happens. But to have the fight and the heart and the hunger that they displayed throughout immensely proud of them like they couldn't have given another ounce yesterday could we have made a few better decisions on times in the ball could skill execution better yeah of course it could but it's the pressure that they're under you know it's the environment that they're stuck in there's always going to be mistakes but I'll absolutely take all day along what they did yesterday couldn't ask for another thing from them um, and, and I do think that long term um, for that group themselves that they will just take huge self-belief and huge heart out of what they've done this past few weeks they've now set a barometer for themselves that that we can't dip back below it has to be building and growing and that and in terms of getting more personnel back and then some of the, the key injuries that we had and Oshin, Neil Grimley, TK, um, you Paddy Burns missing and then you have other boys who will start putting their hands up through the club uh, championship campaign I definitely think that you're standing in great stead heading into next year. And Aaron, we're talking about all the, the good points, like there was messy um, circumstances after the full-time whistle as well. Um, we've seen it all now on social media, the Sunday game, Pat Spallon giving off about it. The the brawl, probably like there wasn't much in it, but bar the TK incident that we're going to have to highlight, like the, there's no hiding away from it. It shouldn't have happened. It doesn't, it doesn't belong on the football field. It's trailed by social media, but that's... You, you nearly feel sorry for TK the day that, you know, it's just a, a hate of the moment thing that um, that has happened. And apart from that incident, there didn't seem to be much like handbags pushed and shoving that we're used to, that we see everybody, you know, when Armagh's involved, it's it's bad looking, but when Kerry and Dublin do it, it's manly, you know, that's the way the football should be. But uh, we're not getting into that debate. But that, uh, how did you think, did it impact the game at all, did you think? Was there obviously the two red cards for Nugent and Kelly, but did it have any impact once the teams come back out for extra time? I don't think it did. Um, I don't think it had much of a bearing um, on how uh, that time was just that crazy. Um, I wouldn't put anything down to, to what happened. Uh, at the time, there in person, it looked a lot worse than what it did whenever I, I went back home and I sat and I watched it last night. It's messy. It shouldn't happen. Am I disappointed that it happened? I am. Um, I, I think after the Throne game, the Donegal earlier this year, you know, I think we probably should be learning our lessons in situations like that there. Granted, there's not a whole pile in it, um, you know, but I just think in terms of what we just had done in the game, the position that we got us in, we salvaged the draw from it. Our focus needed to, to be elsewhere. So uh, I, I have no doubt Kieran 
you know, over time. And, and it's not going to be last night or it's not going to be the day to sit down and start talking about it. But I'm sure it is something that will be addressed. And realistically, it is something as a group that we do need to stop getting involved in. That's three this year. Um, it, it does need to be nipped in the bud because I'm sick of us giving outsiders the opportunity to have a go whenever like, we can honestly speak about the pride that we have for the boys um, you know, and how they performed all year, how they carry themselves, how well they treat and behave the children of our county whenever they see them before, after games, whatever it is. They carry themselves as, as proper inter-county players and brilliant representatives for our county. So let's not forget that. But, but I am disappointed that we got sucked into something else again that we had no business getting involved in. Uh, I think it took away from what we did really well at the end of the game, but I don't think it, it had any influence or bearing on how extra time our penalties went. Um, and in relation to, to the TK one, um, it, it's tough to sit and address something like that whenever it involves one of our own. Um, but like what's gone on in social media this past 24 hours, um, it, I don't, I don't agree with it whatsoever. Was, was he wrong? He absolutely was wrong. Um, and to me, it, it's a moment of madness. I, I've seen him at underage and I played against him and I, I can't claim that I know him, but what I do know of him, it's completely out of character. I've never seen him involved in anything before. It, it literally come down to a moment of, of madness uh, for me. Um, but I know there's nobody that's going to be feeling worse today than TK. Um, he, he'll know himself it, it shouldn't have happened and he'll regret that it did happen. But this vilifying people and talking about lifetime suspensions and everything, you know, it doesn't happen in any other sport. We, we ban people for life. We're fortunate that it wasn't serious or it doesn't appear to have been serious. It's a regrettable incident. Nobody will regret it more than TK. And I'd be of the opinion, I think he'll hold his hands up, admit he was wrong, take whatever punishment comes and let the young lad move on from that there. And it'll be an experience that he'll absolutely learn from. Um, but again, completely out of character for him. Uh, never seen him involved in anything at all before. And like I said, once this is dealt with, I'd like him just to be able to, to get on back playing football and doing what he does best. You know, he's had a tough year where he's missed out on all of this um, through injury, but I'd like it just to be put to bed and like I said, take whatever punishment comes his way. It, it might be severe enough or it might, I don't know what the precedence is for it, um, but he's a young lad who has made a mistake. It's not a more than that there. Um, and I'd like him just to be allowed to get back doing whatever, doing what he does best whenever that team is right um, and just put it down to an experience that I'm fairly certain will never, ever happen again. And the brawl, like, what come out of it, the two red cards, um, but then Armagh, or both teams, sorry, were back 15 for extra time. Just on Greg McCabe's red card, Arne, get your views on it. I felt at the time, certainly it, it was a missed time challenge. He was late. It was a, a definite yellow card and a definite free a red card I thought was very harsh. Now, he does probably catch his head once I get seeing it back again, but it's just a mistimed hit. I thought, like, I'm trying to think of it, you know, take your arm off, bias out of it and try to think of it, you know, two boys going for the ball. I thought it was a definite yellow. Is there, Was a red harsh? What, what would your views be? Uh, it It's a mistime. He, he goes to put plenty on him, on Matthew Tierney. There's no doubt about that there. Um if, if, like I say, we take our, our orange and white glasses off, uh, if, if you go back to last year where John Small nails Owen McLaughlin and he ends up, he, he breaks both jaws and there's a whole uproar that he only gets a yellow card and everyone thought it should have been a red. For me, like Greg has absolutely no intentions of catching him in the head at all. So uh, it's a missed time shoulder. To me, I, I, I just think because he does catch him in the head, it seems to be if there's any head to head contact at all now that unfortunately, even though it's not intentional, you're you're going to get you're going to get the red car for the, so uh, that that's my take on it. Um, I think it it was very unlucky, very unfortunate. Um, it was supposed to be a perfectly tame challenge. Tierney just turns into him slightly, and and he does as Greg comes across the front of his body, he does catch him in the chin. So. Uh, it is unfortunate. Um, it it was unlucky. It was it was borderline in terms of it could have been executed as a perfectly timed hit, and it 
it's disappointing for him um, because there was no, as far as I'm concerned, there wasn't any malice in it. But once there is contact made with head now at this stage, you're probably walking a tightrope. So um, you, I think the way they describe it is you have a duty of care to, to the man you're going to hit. Um, again, we can probably turn around and say, oh, well, John Small get away with it last year. Does that make it right? It, it doesn't really. Um, but to me, Greg was even more unlucky or unfortunate than, say, the likes of that John Small incident in last year's semi final. And then heading into Axe time, Armand had all the momentum heading into Axe time. They'd come back from six down, Rain's big kick, obviously. Um, Axe time was just back and forward as well. Like there was, they would score, we would score, we got a goal, they got a goal. Like it, it was just, it was crazy the, the Axe time. But Arma did have the momentum going in on then just after the goal, them coming straight back up the field, McDade getting the goal was just a, it was a real killer blow, wasn't it? It was again. It probably reminded me a wee bit of Paddy McKeever scoring into the canal goals in 02 and next thing Karen Whelan goes straight up the field and buries one into the hill. It like for me, it was such a momentum swing for us, and it wasn't the fact it was the fact it was a goal and how calamitous it was like that the panic then was going to set through Galway and their keeper um, but I suppose you, you have to give Galway some credit there as well because they have like there would have been serious question marks asked of them throughout the years I think the stat was yesterday like in 13 years they'd only won one game at Croke Park they can't do it whenever it matters most um, so for them to be able to, to work the score can't think of the name of the substitute comes on and has the composure you know to create a goal whenever maybe a simple point could have been tapped over the bar and then McDade really at that stage like he was he was motoring he, he was going to be hard to handle he was someone who uh, I thought had to be watched very closely coming into the game and really whenever it mattered most he he was the one who really stood up for Galway kicked one two and really carried the game to us so it um, yeah it, it for the last 10 minutes of normal time and throughout the whole of extra time it just was you hadn't a clue what was going to happen there just seemed to be no rhyme or reason to, to what was going on across the field um, but from from a Galway perspective you do genuinely have to give them a bit of credit that they were able to still find a way to, to bring themselves back into the game and then even the what, what Ethan does you know to just take on that he's going to go past everybody Um and create the, the pint opportunity uh, for Jamar. Again, could he have taken an, uh, another play out of it and maybe rolled it into the net? I think at the time, we were all, it's as easy saying that now in hindsight, but I think at the time, we were all just delighted to see the ball going over the bar. I think we might have a wee bit of regret that there was a bit of time between the ball going over the bar and the keeper kicking the ball out that we all dropped off and give them, give them the kick out where, to me, I don't think it was the best option. Their keeper was having an absolute melt at that stage. I think had we have fully pressed him, um, their defence were under pressure. He was definitely panicking. Um, and I, I think we could have penned them into their half instead of letting them work the ball into our half and then obviously create the, the score for McDade to, to kick. Now, it still was an unbelievable point. Um, but I think we'll have a regret that, that we dropped off and offered them up the, the kick out. Um, but it seemed to be en masse across the field. It was a call from ourselves for everybody to, to get back. Um, where I thought, just given the pressure that their keeper was under and the amount of mistakes that he was making, I, I thought we should have pinned them into their, to their own half and try to see the game out in that regard instead and let them get the run of us. But again, it's, it's easy for us all to speak now in hindsight. And then obviously, the game goes to penalties and that's how it's decided. What's your thoughts on penalties, are? And I know if people don't like them, they don't think that they should be, um, that's how a game should be decided. Even Park Joyce said after the game yesterday that he doesn't agree with them and it's not fair for games. I'm not sure, like, if they played next Sunday again and it was a draw on extra time on a draw, then what do you do? <laughs> like, is it a yeah. me Dublin from 91 again? You have to play four weeks in a row, like, or what, what do you do? I, I don't mind the penalties. It's a it's a harsh way to lose, but Rian missing the free, if Rian had to miss the free at the end, that's a harsh way to lose as well. So what what way do you feel about them? I, I, I agree there and I, I heard Geezer saying something similar. To me, we know what the rules are before the season starts. It, and it was flagged. I read a, a good article in there, Sydney Pendant last week, where they basically said one of these four games at the weekend is going to come down to penalties. Unfortunately, it was their game. 
is it ideal? No, it, it's not really. Uh, I, I get what Sean Cavan is saying in terms of, oh, it's not the fundamentals or what everyone does in their game, but it's part and partial now and we've known before the season started. So if you have, a, 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 I suppose, if, if you know what can come down to deciding on penalties, practice your penalties. It's the same as, how does Ryan kick that there free kick? Because he goes and practice after training every night. If you're going to be putting your hands up at some stage, like a penalty, whenever you know this is what it come down to, you just need to practice. It's it's as simple as that. Um, Brian Mallon, he he was always of the opinion maybe that we could have a a, a shot out of our hands the same way as you would, uh, you know, for, for players from from the fourteen yard line, because uh, that's the same as what we do uh, from from open play. But ultimately, it has to be decided one way or another. So you're right. Like if it goes to a replay next week, if it goes to extra time, and then it goes to penalties, then is it okay in a week's time? You know, so for me, it is what it is. You know what you've signed up for before the season starts. Um, is it pressure? It's unbelievable pressure. But that was unbelievable pressure on 10 players. The whole thing was coming down on Ray and O'Neill's shoulders at one stage and everyone in the stadium standing and it's down to one man and he, he delivers. So um, I have nothing but admiration for, for any of the boys to, that stands up and takes them. Um, would I have the confidence to do it? I wouldn't be so sure. I, I, would, I would have never hit of Henley, so uh, I, I don't know. But it takes serious courage to stand up uh, and do what what the boys did, and it, and it's tough on them. Uh, but I I wouldn't I wouldn't have an issue with it uh, whatsoever in terms of there's so much that went on throughout the rest of the game, so many mistakes, so many points we scored, scored, maybe shots we could we could have blocked or whatever um, it, it is what it is in terms of the penalties it's it's just another area of the game where you know you can either it can either make you or break you and unfortunately yesterday we did get the rubber green and Galway obviously scored all four of the penalties and they won the game probably um, they probably just deserved it Aaron they were probably just the better team obviously it was so even throughout but for the first 20 minutes like Arma were, were brilliant the first 20 minutes go I probably just deserved to, to win the game yeah I, I think if, if we were being honest that that period that we spoke about the first 20 minutes I thought some of the football we played was unbelievable in terms of from Ethan's kickouts to one foot pass up front and the ball was going over the bar um, a, a couple of scores you can think of like there was one there was a great ball when in the end Nugent Ray peels off his shoulder taps the ball over the bar and um, we, we were flowing really well, but we had those two goal opportunities that if we were presented with them again, we might have done differently. Um, Aidan Nugent, who, to be fair, you probably wouldn't have wanted someone better with the ball in their hands uh, than him at that stage. Like he's usually so clinical and ruthless. Um, maybe Jarley Oog might think twice and maybe look at what Derry did the day before and they were so ruthless with any opportunity they got. A plenty of goal at that stage, even at the time, I felt it could have put the game even out of Galway's reach at that stage because they hadn't got going at all. Um, but in fairness to them, um, whether it was tactically or whether it was just players on the field, I thought they started to settle well. They got a much better shape up front. Um, I was in the canal end where they were shooting in, in the first half and they, they were all over the place. They didn't really know, look like they knew what, what way they had to play in terms of the likes of Comer, Finnerty, Walsh. Um, were just sort of ad hoc moving all over the place and, and not having a focal point but Finnerty in particular I thought really came into the game causes serious trouble like he is superb left foot he, he looks he, he just oozes class um, and Malloy in defence and Liam Silk in that period of 15 minutes for half time I thought they showed their composure and I suppose know-how in Crow Park in terms of what they would have done throughout the years with Cara Finn and got on a world of ball, used it really well, and like they had done super to come in seven points all at half time. Whenever after twenty minutes, we were the team really in control. So we probably just weren't ruthless enough at that period of the game to, to maybe put it a wee bit out of their reach. Um, whenever we were we were definitely on top, and then you have to say uh, for, from then on, it was bravery uh, and just heart and desire from everybody to just keep going. Um, but go with from that stage on just seemed to get their scores that wee bit easier um, than we were capable of doing. And Aaron, now, now that the season's over, um, obviously a brilliant year for Armagh. Division 1 uh, kept their place, a couple of big wins in Division 1. 
um, and obviously a run to the quarterfinal. The epic game yesterday, one poor incident was the, the Donegal game, obviously, in Bali Buffet. That was a bit of a downer um, in the Ulster Championship. But the year as a whole is encouraging for Armagh, looking forward to next year. I don't think there'll be any changes in terms of management or player-wise. player, player wise. Um, The only changes would be them injured bodies coming back and maybe a few players, you know, uh, that improved from the club championship. But no, nobody stepping away, no, no changes in the management or anything and build again for next year and go again. Yeah, and I, I think whenever the management and the players sit down and look at it, like how we started the league campaign and the style that we were playing and the energy levels we were playing, for some reason, and it was really after the Tyrone game, it dipped and we went into a sort of lull in our performance and a caginess. And I don't know whether it was an overthinking of our game or how other teams are reading us, but it went really from the Monaghan game uh, until Bally Buffet. And then we come back to playing the style and playing in the manner um, that suits the team best. So I think as a whole, they'll all be shrewd enough to sit back and assess uh, where it went wrong or, or why we played the way we did or maybe it's just not that easy to, to play at the intensity that we played uh, with throughout a whole campaign um, but just the positives you know are endless in terms of the style of play and um, the performances that we were getting out of boys and then you see a couple in with some key personnel uh, that we have that will come back from injuries um, and I have no doubt like the enthusiasm that that's going to give club football within Arma or boys who are borderline in terms of can they give a wee bit more for their club to get themselves to the level where they're going to be a county player now and um, can we unearth a few more players out of that there um, I, I think it's you can't underestimate the importance that that run will have for not the next generation but maybe a few people who are borderline maybe early 20s who have the ability but just need to they give it their all. Commitment levels need to go to where they need to be. Um, so I, I think just in terms of everything, um, it's, it's a massively positive year. Um, and I think it's something that we just have to grow and build on. Um, and while the players will obviously be hugely disappointed, um, you know, today and probably for, for weeks to come, uh, I think there's, there's huge building blocks there that whenever the time's right and the club campaign's over, um, that we can go and start to build on. And I don't know where our, our target is, our target then maybe next year, see if we can go and maybe win a league title. Um, definitely get back to an Ulster campaign and realistically, let's go and start winning some self-aware in terms of whether it's league or Ulster um, and, and t- try and take this group one step further. But I, I think uh, we're in a really good place. We have a good core group of boys there, the likes of Aidan, Rory, Morgie, Soupy, who are all early 30s, who've been there long enough um, to, to know what it's about. And then you have a good core group of boys who are now hitting their mid-20s and we're ready to come into their peak. Um, that we have, a, we have a perfect blend within within the group now. And like I said, there's absolutely, there's no chance that I think we lose anyone in terms of whether that there is management uh, or playing personnel. And that's, that's hugely important again because it just gives you great continuity going forward. So that's the end of Armagh's season. So um, we'll be covering the, the club season now um, for the rest of the, the year with the podcast. And obviously we'll be covering the ladies um, All-Ireland charge as well there in the All-Ireland quarterfinal against Kerry in two weeks' time. And the Camogues as well who um, are top of their group at this stage. Aaron, thanks very much for coming on today and giving us your thoughts on the game and being excellent with us all year um, for our, all of our review shows, all of our Armagh review shows. Hopefully we'll have you back next year and we'll have more um, big days ahead in the coming, coming years with this team and we look forward to that. And thanks very much and best luck with the, the Cross McGlynn Beer Club um, for the rest of the year. No, my pleasure. Thanks very much for the opportunity, Sean. Appreciate it.